What's up Rebels, it is Chunky Monkey 40 here and today we get to see the stand up General Lee. Five, four, three, two, ladies and gentlemen, the stand up General Lee, one, let's go! This is going to be something special. We are at the Volo Museum in Volo, Illinois, but today we are focused on one thing and one thing only. Paying our respects to Richard Sefton, the man who built the stand-up General Lee. So we're going to get Richard's grandson, Ryan, to fire off the Dixie horn, and then we're going to start her up. So this is where the magic happens, where everything comes together. Oh wow, now I get to see the popular hot riding sticker. Shout out to Cam Benty. Whoa! Yeah, I guess those are all original stickers that were from day one. Yeah, popular hot riding was the first magazine article written about it. The weight is actually still in front of the axle. The motor and everything is, you know, the trans is over the axle, but the motor is in front of the axle. That's why this car is a hard wheelie, you know, if that motor was back way past that axle, idle you can jump that thing up. So after spending some time talking with Al Payne in the mechanic shop at the Volo Museum, it was finally time for Amanda and Angela Sefton to get a ride in their dad's car, the stand-up General Lee. First in line to get a ride in the stand-up General Lee is, of course, Angela Sefton. Angela is Rich's oldest daughter, and so she will be riding shotgun with Al Payne. Al is the lead mechanic at the Volo Museum, and he is also responsible for bringing the stand-up General Lee back to life after over 20 years sitting in storage. All right. All right, let's do this. Wow, every time he steps on it, it just wants to pop up so bad. Look at how that thing stands, that's just so cool. <laughs> that was just like I remembered it. Fuck yes. <laughs> 
Yeehaw! Yeehaw! Thank you so much. Absolutely. Oh my god. And now it is Amanda Sefton's turn to get a ride in the stand-up general. So Amanda, her daughter, and her son all hopped in. You guys got to get a ride in the stand-up general, your dad's car. How was it? Amazing. Basically, when we took off, we lifted off in the air. I felt my dad embrace me and hold me and just tell me, I'm here, kiddo. I'm here. It was a great feeling. Yeah, and I brought um, both my kids with me. Um, they never got to meet my dad, so having them be here for this and, and have exactly. these memories means a lot to me. I'm shocked they took the kids took it well. <laughs> I was like, ah, I was late for that. Your grandpa's grandkids were starting to know. High five. Good job, oh, yay. Hi, hi. Good job. <laughs> All right, Anthony. Yeah. Go, Anthony. Go. So you're only once in a lifetime experience. I'll go, okay. I'll go. No, he's gonna go. <laughs> <laughs> he's getting ready. Right. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.
Yeah, you can take them off now, okay? Yo. That one did it with the valve cover gasket. Uh-oh. No, it's fine. It's, I knew it was coming. <laughs> I got new ones. Uh, that was good. <laughs> Your grandfather? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's exciting. Especially when he, uh, he stepped on it, yeah, huh? Yeah, he is. leaking pretty good. <laughs> My name's Anthony Flores, son of Angela Sefton, first grandson of Richard Sefton. Do you have any memories with the stand-up general with your grandfather? It was always mainly just a talk. It was always something to, uh, to talk about, you know, he'd pull out pictures or he'd be going through something, looking for something and be like, oh, hey, look, here's the picture of the general. And he'd just start explaining about when the rear end was taken out and when he had the body off of the chassis, just getting it ready. It was always a talk like, man, could I wish you were around when that car was still around? Or I wish I still had it, wish I can get my hands on it. It was always something to talk about and I always told him man I wish I did get to see it and then when you heard that the Volo Museum had acquired the car what was your reaction I couldn't believe it at first and my mom and my aunt both told me like hey you know we might we're probably gonna be able to get to see it again and I, I know my, my mom and my aunt were always trying to get it from who had it after my grandfather for such a long time it was such a battle I guess that I from what I heard growing up I mean I didn't really understand too much of it it kind of tore me down knowing we're probably never going to get a chance to actually see that car. I always wanted to see it, and I mean, here it is now. So when that moment came, I, it was all kind of like a dream almost. I was like, no way. Like, there's no way I'm going to get to see this car. And I mean, I'm here now. And You've even ridden in it now, yeah, too. It touched home. I was like, damn, my grandfather built that. I'm finally getting to see it. Uh, I hope he's proud that all those times he can tell me, oh, I hope you, one day I wish you get to see it. And yesterday was the day. <laughs> I never understood the sound of uh, what he said. That car is loud until I finally got in it. <laughs> <laughs> when was the last time you guys had both ridden in the car? I rode in it in 2003 with my dad when we had it at Thunder Valley um, Drag Strip in um, Oklahoma. And that was when we had just gotten the car back and he was doing a few runs. And I just rode in it um, with him to the starting line and then I got out and then he tried to get it to stand up and then that's when the engine blew. Oh man. <laughs> I'd have to say it was probably when uh, Antelope Valley Drag Strip was still up and running. Um, he was actually doing a photo shoot for one of the magazines. It wasn't even the General Lee colors or anything yet. It was still primed. It's wow. probably the last time I've seen it actually up in the air and actually get a ride in it. And so do you have memories from when he was building the car? Tons of memories. Hours and hours in our driveway in Mission Hills, him and AJ building the frame, the A-frame to lift the body up, lots of sweat, lots of blood and tears, many times coming out and saying, Daddy, you done yet? And <laughs> He would just say, nope, not yet, kiddo, a couple more hours, a couple more hours. And I would just sit there and just, you know, hang out with them, hang out with him and AJ. It was a very interesting, very interesting bunch. How old were you, do you think? I probably was about roughly 13, 14. Wow. We discussed talking about what happened in 1989 with the loss of the car during the divorce. So can you explain to me what exactly happened? Who wants to take it? So, um... The court issued um, an order basically saying that my, my dad was supposed to pay for attorney's fees in the divorce against my mom. My mom's lawyer basically saw this car for its value and nothing else and had the car seized to pay for attorney's fees. And my dad had all of the proper paperwork saying that, you know, they didn't have the right to sell the car and it didn't matter, the car had already been sold. Uh, my mom didn't have any idea what was going on. She had no clue um, that her attorney was trying to basically illegally take the car and sell it. What ended up happening was the car was um, taken to a, a sheriff's lien sale and sold. The receipt that they have from the lien sale says um, that it was sold for $1,000, which we all know that it sold for a lot more than that. And so basically anything over $1,000, which that was what was owed to cover attorney's fees, um, the lawyer took and pocketed. And my mom didn't have any clue. She didn't know that the car was gone until long afterwards. And so kind of over the years, she was improperly blamed for the sale of the car, um, when in, in reality it was her attorney that did it. Um, and she didn't have anything to do with it. She knew exactly, you know, what went in to make this car and she she was there for the building purpose. of it yeah she was not there was no malicious intent from her part whatsoever when she found out what was her reaction 
I mean, in the, pro in the time they were going through a divorce, so she probably would have said, you know, I, I didn't have anything to do with it. I didn't know they took the car. Um, but years later when he got it back, I remember vividly, we pulled up to my mom's house in Palmdale, California, and he had the car on a ch on an open trailer, a flatbed trailer, being towed by our um, crew cab dually. And my mom came out of the house, and he went up, and they talked, and he said, it. "He said I told you I'd get it back someday." And she said, "I'm glad. I'm glad you got it back." That's awesome. And it was short lived, unfortunately, yeah. but at least he had those few years with it, and you know we took it to a few shows, and we had a lot of fun in the short time we had it back. I do remember going to the Burbank. Uh, garage where Tom Cemento and all the other crew would be there and AJ and them and you know he would did a lot of the uh, cage work there a lot of passes on the streets there with it too um, there was a just a back road there that he would take it out when it was up and running and yeah, a lot of fun times in that shop so did he do any wheelies on like the back roads no it wasn't at the full capacity to do that it was still in the trial and error trying to trying to figure out where the weight of the engine need to be um, there was a lot of shifting of the weight back and forth trying to find out the right location of it and once it was there then you know that's when he took it to the drag strips it was way before the generally colors was on it that he was already on the drag strips doing runs by with it and stuff that's awesome. when I was pretty much more involved with it um, I'm much older than my sister so I got the beginning of the story of the generally she pretty much got the tail end of the story so I married and went off with my own life and kind of stood back for many years and then when I found it, it was taken and stuff like that. It was it was a hard pill to swallow because I knew how much sweat and pain went into building it. And like I said before, you know, my sister can contest to it. It, it really drove our dad to his grave. The, the agony of trying to get it back was hard. And now it's here and we know he's here with us. And that ride today definitely was a good closure for us to know where it's gonna be. Absolutely. And um, know that, you know, we can come here and see it. As can anybody else that wants to yep. come see it, which Coming. is which is what our dad wanted more than anything, was he built the car to tour with it, to, to have people look at it, enjoy it, listen to it. Because, you know, from a distance, it might just look like a regular General Lee. There's, there's tons of General Lee replicas out there. And then you get closer, and you say, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. What the heck is that? <laughs> you know, we were growing up, you know, everybody knows that as a blowner, but we know it as E.T. <laughs> you know, he would tease us all the time with, you know, oh, I'm going to go get E.T., you know, and he actually had a stuffed animal E.T. at one point in time with a picture. That was one of my good memories of when we were building it. That's awesome, and I'm so happy that you guys got the closure this weekend that has been requested and begged for for 20 years. You guys have prayed for it, and I'm just so happy for you guys that yes, you guys got this closure too. today. And thank you so much to Brian and the Volo Museum for rescuing the car, so to speak, because who knows how many more years it would have sat in a garage covered in dust, covered in dust just with nobody being able to see it or enjoy it. So um, we are truly grateful and we appreciate them including us in this process because they didn't have to do that and we really appreciate it yes absolutely do huge huge thank you it's like I said it's a great way for us to finally put a lot of that unanswered unfeelings that we had with the car to rest um, just knowing that it's finally in a resting spot that it's gonna be cherished by many 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 people and as us as well and it's a place that I can bring my kids my grandkids and maybe someday my great-grandkids hopefully many years from now but you know would love to bring them here and be able to share this experience with them you know it's a piece of a history right here I was about 13 when we lost my grandfather. It hit me hard because I was really starting to get along with my grandfather a lot. I was always with him almost every other week during my childhood. After I was about seven, eight, really got to build an interest in muscle cars and just going to swap meets to get parts for cars that he was working on. I know there was one car that was given to me by my grandfather. It's a 66 Dart GT. It's got a 318 small block in it, four speed to the floor. Posi rear end, 13 inch wheelbase. It's got a Monaco rear end shortened to fit underneath, disc brakes all around, but it needs some love. And every time I want to start wrenching on it, it just, it hits inside like, man, I, I'm afraid to touch it. I don't want to destroy something I don't know I can't run to my grandpa and be like, hey, yo, yo, I need some help on this. <laughs> like, <laughs> it was always fun. Every time I'd be with him, working on it with them, or even the small things, it wasn't ever really anything too major. Just a little tinkering here and there on the car. And he always told me, kiddo, this 
this car is going to be yours. I mean, he always did the behind the scenes big stuff when I wasn't around, but I was at least there for some of it. And so you learned quite a bit about working on cars. Do you work on cars nowadays? Yeah, but not, not what I know he wanted me to do, unfortunately. <laughs> I know he rolls in his grave every time I start wrenching on my car. But um, <laughs> basically, I was, you know, into the Honda scene as a teen growing up just because I lost my grandfather. And every time I got close to a muscle car that I wanted to, it was like I didn't have him to run to and teach me because I, I was too young at the time to really take everything in and learn it. It was just more of a bonding experience for me and my grandfather. I'm into rear-wheel drive drifting scene, so I kind of, wrench on drift cars but it's more of japanese cars i guess you could say it's not really what my grandfather was into <laughs> he, <laughs> he was, was american made he only was american right american made real country he yeehawed to the fullest so um, <laughs> i do got that fire in me too but that, to me i just see those you know japanese cars as real toys real something that you can just tinker with and mess around with if you bang it up here and there it is what it is but i don't want to do something like that to one of these you know especially yeah, not no. the dart the dart's a nice beautiful sunday drive car you go out drive around with the family in it and enjoy the, the wind blowing in your hair later guys i'm getting to drive the stand up general lee all right, there we go. All right. I didn't roll very far. Brum 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 We going to the left or right yeah, in the middle? Right to the left. Alright. Alright, I'm gonna go a little forward so you can get out. You know, okay. you can get out. There you go. Thing wasn't even on and my nerves were through the roof. <laughs> so what I pull this wire and push? Yep. yep. I drove the stand up general. That'd be a good clickbait YouTube video. <laughs> <laughs> he had a, you know, the same as they used on set antenna when he originally built the car. But when we got it, it had a magnetic antenna that just went on there. So somewhere down the line, it got lost. So when Tom Cermento was out this weekend, he brought with him one of the uh, screen used antennas that he had up in his attic, uh, brought it in. And that's uh, what would have been on the car originally. And that's what would have been screen used. The hole was already there. There's an imprint in the uh, paint where it was. So now we got the, the right antenna and it's screen used. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Watch how, watch how much the wheels turn when he turns the steering wheel. Whoa. <laughs> That's all built for the ice. Uh, That's crazy. Kind of you guys need to build the Volo drag strip. <laughs> That's what we need next from y'all. <laughs> we'll definitely be breaking stuff for sure if we did that. Just some good old boys. Never mean no harm. It's all you 